Sandman. It is not uncommon for authors of fiction to create unusual creatures in their pages. Readers are often led to believe that they are all real, as was the case with Howard Lovecraft. Lovecraft created a large-scale pantheon of gods, demigods and monsters, otherworldly creatures who live in other dimensions and planets, but actively interfere in the affairs of people, with their supernatural powers. Lovecraft's mythology is dominated by the Great Old Ones, the Elder Gods and the Other Gods. The Great Old Ones are incredibly powerful beings, supposedly the same age as the universe. Members of mystical sects and cults worship them as gods. The Great Old Ones live in other star systems, or even outside of our dimension. Many of them are non-corporeal, or rather are not made of matter. Their power is based on powers unknown to mankind, which are traditionally considered magical. The Great Old Ones can only influence earthly affairs under certain astronomical conditions, such as the particular arrangement of stars and planets in the sky, and only when assisted by their cultists' followers. Cthulhu, is one of the main The Great Old Ones. Although he is not the most powerful of Lovecraft's creations, he is one of the most recognizable characters in Lovecraftian mythology. Cthulhu's appearance is very peculiar and frightening. He simultaneously looks like an octopus, a man and a dragon of monstrous proportions. The creature has a head with tentacles, a humanoid body covered with scales and a pair of wings on his back. A feature of Cthulhu is his unimaginably fast regeneration. So in one of Lovecraft's works, Cthulhu was injured in a ship explosion, which tore his body apart and thus gave the crew time to escape. But luck didn't last long and Cthulhu fully recovered a few minutes later. Cthulhu's main strength lies not in his physical strength, it lies in his telepathy and regeneration. Cthulhu's exact height is not specified, but he has always been compared to a walking mountain. When he walked or floated on the bottom of the ocean, his body rose high above the water. Cthulhu has the unusual ability to affect the mind of human beings, but because the monster is submerged in a deep sleep beneath the Pacific Ocean's water column, his abilities are drowned out. However, he is capable of creating terror and fear in the dreams of particularly sensitive people. Victims of dreams experiencing unimaginable nightmares, sometimes going crazy. According to Lovecraft's myths, one day, with the right position of the stars, the city of Arlie will emerge from the water and Cthulhu will be released. As Lovecraft noted, Cthulhu was spawned in the world of Vural, located in the 23rd Nebula. Later, he visited the green double star Zoth, where he copulated with a creature named Idya to spawn children. Cthulhu and his spawn then traveled to Yugath, a satellite of the Pluto, from where they descended to Earth. On an island in the Pacific Ocean, they built the giant stone city of Arlie. At first the Cthulhu spawns were resisted by the Elder Things or Old Ones, a star race that had inhabited the Earth for millions of years before Cthulhu came. After a war in which the Cthulhu spawn destroyed all of the Elder Thing cities, both sides declared peace and agreed not to interfere with each other. Cthulhu and his spawn then enjoyed many years of freedom in this world, but they soon fell into a period of deep waiting. Enshrouded by Cthulhu's power, they became invulnerable to the Elder Gods, but were immobilized, making telepathy their only means of communication. Over millions of years, humanity slowly evolved. Cthulhu spoke to the new beings in their dreams, telling them where to find the statues of his image, which he brought from the stars, thus Cthulhu's cult was born. One day a calamity struck the city of Arlie. For no apparent reason, the city plunged into the waters of the Pacific Ocean, trapping Cthulhu and his spawn. The water blocked their telepathic signals, precluding any contact with their servants. From then on, they could only use telepathy while Arlie out of the water. This could only happen when the stars were arranged in a certain order. Since then, Arlie has risen out of the water from time to time, releasing Cthulhu for a brief period and sinking back into the ocean after a few days or weeks. The day will come, however, when the Black City will rise forever from the waters of the world's oceans. Then, the finally awakened Cthulhu will kill, wreak havoc and destruction. According to Lovecraft, Cthulhu cults are widespread in modern times. Traces of his worship remain in Haiti, Louisiana, the South Pacific, Mexico City, Arabia, Siberia and Greenland. Immortal priests maintain the cult somewhere in the mountains of China, 
but the true center of the cult was located somewhere in Arabia, near the legendary city of Irem. Cthulhu, is an alien being, completely alien to human nature, and the entire history of mankind is but a moment of his sleep. The cultists are convinced of the great power of their idol and wait impatiently for the stars to align so that the city of Arliye may rise again from the depths and finally free the great old one's god from sleep.